In our morning rounds, the gut-heart connection. A new study finds out that our gut bacteria is linked to weight, fat, and good cholesterol levels. Those are important factors for maintaining a healthy heart. Our Dr. Tara Narul is a cardiologist at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York and joins us at the table. So we were talking about microbiomes, and I went in the green room, a lot of people in there, and I said, who knows what a microbiome <laughs> is? Nobody did except Peter Van Zandt, who's got jokes, said I dated one in college. <laughs> so let's start with a microbiome. What is it, right. and so what does it do? Basically, we have co-evolved and developed an incredible symbiotic relationship with hundreds of trillions of bacteria that live in our digestive tract. And they don't just help us digest food and protect us from infection, but they affect a lot of other systems. They've been shown to reduce the risk of cancer or increase it, to affect our immune system and our mental health, and now to potentially affect our cardiovascular health. So this particular study took blood and fecal samples from about 893 individuals. Blood and fecal samples. Exactly. Mm. And then used that and was able to find a link between the bacteria or microorganisms in the gut and your body mass index, your HDL or good cholesterol, and your triglycerides. They specifically identified 34 microorganisms that led to or had an account for differences of about 4.5% in your body mass index, 6% in triglycerides, and about 4% in HDL. And the more diverse your bacteria were, the mm -hmm. better your HDL and triglycerides. So how can we pat them on the back and say thank you? Yes. <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> That's what he <laughs> so how can we improve our microbiome? I mean, given that the importance of having both the right levels of good and bad bacteria in your gut. Right. Well, there's a couple things that you can do. Your diet clearly affects it. So eating a diet that's high in fruits and vegetables, lower in red meat, high in fiber. Uh, also prebiotics and po probiotics can help. But the issue is that your microbiome is really created over time. From the time you're born, even whether you're a cesarean section versus a vaginal delivery starts to affect the bacteria in mm -hmm. your gut then whether you're breastfed or formula fed, and then the diet you eat throughout your life. In addition, the environment you're raised in. So whether you're in New York City or somewhere else in the country, you're exposed to different bacteria, what antibiotics you take, and even our incredible sanitary procedures that we use. We all use hand sanitizer now. This mm -hmm. is all affecting the different types of bacteria that we have. Should it raise new warnings about using antibiotics, the overuse of antibiotics? Definitely. I think we all have to think about that. And, and the fascinating thing about this is really how it affects the heart. And I think, you know, there are a couple different ways. The first First is obesity. We know that obesity is linked to cardiovascular disease. They've done experiments where they've taken lean mice, given them the bacteria of obese mice, and those lean mice become obese, even get, eating the same mm -hmm. diet. Mm -hmm. So that's a link. The cholesterol link, you might think, how can your gut bacteria relate to cholesterol? Well, the bacteria in the gut affect bile production. Bile production affects your cholesterol. And finally, if you eat a diet high in choline or high in carnitine from red meat, it produces a product called TMAO that can cause increased pla or early plaque formation. In raise your risk of heart attack and stroke. Yeah. We, did a, yeah, we did a segment on this last week, the microbiome. Eat more sauerkraut and pickles. Yes. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and yogurt. Yeah. And yogurt. Yay. All right. <laughs> I eat my yogurt every morning. <laughs> Dr. Taranarola, thank you so thank much. Thank you.